we can go forward if that would be all right with you, uh, Chairwoman Johnson. Okay, I'd like to call a meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals to order on this Monday, July 13th. Liz, do a roll call, please. Ms. Barnes is not present. Ms. Britt? Barnes present. Yeah. Marlene just, just logged in. Oh, thank you. So we have Ms. Barnes, Ms. Britt. Please mute your phone. Please mute your microphones if you're not speaking at the moment, please. Thank you. Ms. Britt is present. Uh, Mr. Donovan. Donovan? Here. <laughs> Ms. Faith? Present. And Ms. Johnson? Present. Ms. Johnson, we have a quorum. Thank now you. I would like to read the, the preamble, if that would be all right with you, Chairwoman. Yes. yes. In compliance with the notification requirements of Ohio's open meeting law under COVID-19 emergency declaration, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to the Roberts rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice. Abstentions from any vote due to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to taking of any vote. In order to ensure that everyone participating in the meeting have the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raise hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raise hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking on the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or the facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When finished speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raised hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Thank you very much. Maurice, there's a second slide, I believe. Sorry, was sending out an invite. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube for public view. We have provided a link to the meeting for those who wish to speak on a particular case via our website and email. We've also received emails from those who have provided written comments on a particular matter. Thank you, Chairwoman. Thank you. Uh, Madam, Chair, Madam Chair, can I just verify that uh, Lori Wagner is on the call? Yes, I am. Okay. Thank you. I did the call, roll call, or we've done the call to order. Next screen. Okay, we'll start with this calendar. Faith? Yes. Yeah. Calendar Please number 20-042 at 3325 Warren Road. Matthew Ditlis Ditlivson, excuse me for the mispronunciation, owner uh, proposes to construct a new two-story garage with a single family residence above on a 6,500 square foot lot in a B1 two-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. Thank you, thank you very much. Mr. Donovan, are you going to uh, swear everybody in? Tim? Yes, I will. Thank you. Would everyone for this case, please raise your right hand. I am going to read a statement. The response I'm looking for is I do, and then give us your name for anyone for this case. Here we go. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do, and your name, please. I do, Matt Dillinson. Anyone else? That's it, Mayor Chair. Thank you very much. This, the history of the property, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. This property was originally zoned general retail. And in 1960, it was changed to two-family residential. And the record room I found, it permit was issued 
In 1922, to erect a garage. A permit was issued in 1947 to erect a one family bricks and wood dwelling garage. Oh, okay. so and garage, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. In 1950, um, I found a permit also stating that a permit was issued to erect a two family brick veneer dwelling and private garage. Um, However, the Estella system states that the certificate of, uh, or issued a certificate of disclosure in uh, 2019 stating that the, the use of the property is single family residential. I didn't find any other variances, any variances on file for this address. And I, that's all that I have, Madam Chair, back to you. Thank you very much. Mr. Lori Wagner will standard. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting a use variance and area variances from the distance, rear yard, and minimum floor area regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in unnecessary hardship, particularly to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, the appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you very much. Yeah, may I call you, Matt? Yes, please. Okay, tell us exactly what you'd like to do. Um, so I have a um, very small kind of uh, outdated garage there it's in bad shape it leaks it needs it needs replacement um i also have that corner lot so i have a lot of unused space um i'd like to put in a three car uh garage with a unit above uh, and kind of utilize the the property to its full potential and and get some more um use out of the property as well as value okay i'm looking at the plans right now okay some of those pictures, that, that house there, the blue siding, um, previously when I started this project, I spoke with Adam Davenport, um, kind of told me to put together uh, some photos of, pro of projects I've done around town. Um, that one there, the blue siding, uh, the, the colonial duplex is a, is a recent project I did. I'm actually living on that one. Um, there's another photo of it, the before. So it's just kind of, I put together some before and afters of the, the uh, type of, um, projects that we do to uh, increase, you know, uh, values in the neighborhood. And that's what those are. That's not the same house that the, the property is on. City planning. Is Shannon here today? No, but I believe we have Adam, uh, Adam Davenport. Uh, Adam, Adam's with us. Okay. Yes. I actually just, I just hopped on as soon as uh, the legal description was read. Um, so, one road. Yes, that's that's true too. Yeah, you should probably swear me in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ready, Adam? I'm do you ready. Swear, do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Uh, so Matt and I talked a while ago before uh, we were working from home, probably probably almost six months ago at this time. Um, uh warren road to to me is a, is a very busy road i think that you know the traffic concept i can occur with that um there are some other structures around there that have some higher density in the neighborhood than some of the rest of west park um most of west park is definitely you know single family houses but on warren road it, it varies a little bit between uh single family and duplexes and even some some multi-family properties uh what Matt is proposing to do, I think, is always a smart way to do density and is not, you know, explicitly, uh, you know, a bigger structure. It, um, you know, is a way to finance a otherwise, um, an otherwise burdensome garage and, and put a, a smart unit into the, the neighborhood, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, this, the driveway with if this were approved would probably have to be tapered to um come down near harley it couldn't be likely that wide at least what i'm looking at right now on the, 
the proposed site plan that might need to be tapered. But um, other than that, uh, you know, this could walk through um, normal city approvals uh, for the design and um, construction of the garage. Thank you. There are Question is, is there a hydrant uh, near there? A fire hydrant near there? Yeah, it looks like. Go back one slide. Uh, sorry. Um, there. Is that a hydrant on the corner? I can't tell. I guess my question is, where is it placed in relationship to the driveway? I believe there's a hydrant uh, that would interfere with Diane yeah. Harley. Okay, that's the question. Obviously, there was no community meeting. Um, we've not heard from the councilman, uh, Mr. Slack, have we? He, uh, this is Adam again. Uh, he, he texted me this morning. So for what it's worth, he said he's in support. He wasn't going to join the meeting. I didn't understand what you said. I'm sorry, Adam. Sorry. He, um, he, he texted me this morning in support of the project and said he was not going to join it. Okay. Board comments, questions, concerns? Uh, Madam Chair. I have, a qu I have a question, Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. Uh, to, to the appellant and uh, Adam Davenport, um, you had mentioned, Adam, that the driveway would have to be uh, tapered in from the uh, width at the at the uh, width of the garage door openings. Um, are we going to maintain the um, existing curb cut? So that we're not going to have to encroach on any of the tree lawn trees. At um, I think the Helen should answer that question. That that would be fine with me. Um, that third car, um, the extra garage door there, with that where that would be in question is going to be. Um, I wouldn't say everyday use, more more um, storage for myself. So mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Um, it, you know, there's a there is a tree there. I'm looking at it on Google Google Maps now. I wouldn't be interested in uh, removing that tree if if at all. Okay. Um, but I, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think widening would work, or um, or or um, you know, just kind of slicing it in like Adam's suggesting would either way would be an option. Okay. Your plans show and what you're going to do, don't they? Uh, I think he has it as a sh as a sh shot on the plans for the drive. Correct. For the that seems like that would be widening it. Yeah, if it if if it needs to not be widened because of the curb cut, I'm sure that can be um, completed that way. I'm surprised it hadn't been called out in the plan review, Mr. Riccardi. Does that seem like it should have been? I don't think Mr. Riccardi is, is on yet. He was having some trouble getting in. He should be on momentarily. Uh, well, uh, Adam, what your knowledge of the zoning code? I mean, yeah, to me, to me, that should have been called out. I thought if the, if the site plan was submitted with the with the uh, uh, the permit request itself, at least the one that we're looking at, that sh that to me should have been tapered down, or at least called out and tapered down. Well, if this third garage is not going to be used for a car in and out on a daily basis, and it's going to be going for storage, could we flip it to the other side? Um, Are they all the same? Yeah, they would. Well, I'm not sure if that would work. Um, the two car portion of the garage is going to be a double door, 16 foot wide door. And the third part was going where the taper would be a single eight foot. Um, I had I hadn't thought of that flipping it. I'm not sure how that would impact layout and whatnot. Um, I guess it's always a possibility. It's always a possibility to mirror the entire image. Um, I don't I don't know that that would. What you guys are concerned about is keeping the 
existing curb cut the same, right? For the right. Um, Correct. I don't, yeah, I don't know that that would even alleviate anything because the the two car portion, the sixteen foot door, would need. Yes. Adam, I'd like to hear from you on that, please. Well, it seems like, I mean, offhand, I thought that it could be uh, the third car could come down to the, if it, if it was an existing, the existing plan right now with the, the third car closer to Warren Road, that eight foot garage, then that could be tapered down to the existing curb cut if it was used less and, um, uh, you know, a little bit of a narrower foot, foot. Um, that was just offhand looking at it, you know, five minutes ago this morning. I think the zoning code does say that it needs to be narrower than, than a three car length though, to begin with. Right. Yeah, there's, there's language in the zoning code that limits the width of the driveway, I'm sure. Madam Chair, I'm ready to make a motion. Go right ahead. Um, given the testimony, I would move that we would grant the variance with the understanding that the, the revised plan will be submitted that will deal with the legal width of the driveway apron as it relates to the new three-car garage. I would second that motion. Thank you. Call the roll, Mrs. Cooper. Ms. Barnes? Barnes agree. Ms. Bates? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. Johnson? Yes. Calendar 20-42 is granted pending the revised drawings. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. After we have the drawing, we'll send you a letter that we ratify when we ratify them. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Faith, Cable Avenue. Yes. Thank you. Calendar number 20-072 at 5909 Cable Avenue. ABA Enterprise Connect LLC owner proposes to establish use as a children's boarding home for ages 10 through 17 in a B1 two-family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. Thank you very much, Mr. Donovan. You're muted, Mr. Donovan. Sorry about that. Everyone for this case, uh, can you identify yourself? Kudzai Matemachani, OCEC founder. Okay. Elizabeth Armstrong, and I am the clinical director. Okay. Anyone else for this case? Okay, I'm yeah. city planner. Okay. And Chris Alvarado, Slavic Village Development. Okay. I'm going to read a statement. At the end of it, I want each of you to obviously raise your right hand. And your response is, I do. And again, repeat your name. Here we go. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Nicole Calhoun. I do. Christopher Alvarado. I do. Kudzai Matemachani. I do. Elizabeth Armstrong. All right, thank you. History of the property, please, Mrs. Kukla. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since 1929. The record from my founder firm was issued in 1909 to erect a two-story dwelling addition. Um, in 1918, a permit was issued to erect a one-story garage. Um, in the Acela system, I found that a uh, permit was issued in 1991 to install a furnace. 1995, a permit was issued to replace doors and windows. Um, to, uh, 2009, a permit was issued for interior exterior alterations to correct violations. 
2010, a permit was issued to install new plumbing in the bathroom. Um, and then, Madam Chair, there are no variances on file for this address, and that's all that I have. Back to, over to you. Thank you very much. The legal standard will be judging the case on Ms. Wagner. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting a use variance. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship, particularly to the property, such that there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variance not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you very much. To the appellant, ABA Enterprise, also known as COTC, please tell us exactly what you'd like to do. Yes, but this is a um, organization that is going to be working with youth um, and it's going to be working with youth that are in the foster care system. So we know that a lot of kids um, deal with a lot of hardships, have uh, mental health you know, issues, behavioral issues. And we wanted to kind of come together and do something within the community that um, these children so it will therapy facility to help youth that are in custody, help them with their behavior issues, um, help them address any mental health issues that they might have. Um, and we have a specific program that works with the kids on a day to day basis to make sure that they are getting the treatment that they need so that they can follow through and become, you know, good and effective citizens of society and you know when the property was purchased it was purchased specifically for that we tried to um, look for a property that was in the neighborhood that the children will be residing in um, close to um, recreational facilities things that they can utilize and attend for leisure um, and it's pretty much there's going to be a lot of services that we're going to be providing day treatment services respite services um, a lot of trauma focused um, behavioral therapy. The kids will have medication management. Um, they'll have wraparound services that we will then be providing and working with the county to make sure that in the event that a kid does get adopted, they have those supports that are put in place um, to help the family and help the children. And we, we oh, have. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, go right ahead, finish what you were saying. Oh, I was just gonna say, and we have the clinical director, um, Elizabeth Armstrong. She pretty much will be overseeing um, the mental health aspect um, of the program. And she can kind of talk a little bit more about her role. What are the things that, um, the reason it's important to have it there in Slavic Village is often um, foster care type homes are set are out somewhere else out in the country whatever <laughs> it's important to have these in the community where they, these kids live the rest of the they have they still can utilize you know where these are still left or to them or whatever so it's a lot of times they're isolated or they get set into another cultural setting that's just that's why we want to have it there in the Broadway neighborhood. So, um, yeah, basically, you know, I'm going to be overseeing to ensure that, you know, the children all do, do receive therapy, that it's appropriate to them. Um, I have a history of working at Beachbrook in foster care. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty aware of the issues of, that these children face. And um, we really hope to be able to, you know, be able to make an impact on these kids in that area. How long have you owned this property? Um, this, this property was purchased in June. Um, and right now at this moment, we are wanting to work towards uh, making renovations um, that are um, adjusted and in line with the rules and the regulations. So um, it is a very old property um, that does need a lot of work um, to kind of get it up and running. Um, and we are willing to do that. Well, you've had since June and I don't see anything being done on the outside, meaning the, the debris that is around the place. Yes, I um, when we had put in 
the notice, um, it came back denied. And we wanted to kind of make sure that prior to starting reservations that we had complied with um, zoning's appeal um, to receive the certificate of occupancy because the fire department cannot even come out without that certificate of occupancy. And right now, we've, there was a lot of garbage. Um, the prior owner had a lot of things that were in the home. Um, those things have been removed. Um, the house has been sanitized, cleaned out, um, and we're working with the crew to go in and start making renovations. <laughs> We have a letter from the councilwoman. Uh, can you put that back up on the screen, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, uh, Secretary Kukla. I am unable to participate in this morning's BZA hearing regarding 5909 Cable Avenue. I want to express my objection to granting this variance that is underlined in bold type. I have never received any communication nor met the appellant regarding its request and plans to establish a children's boarding home on a residential street. Sincerely, Phyllis Cleveland. Um, I, I really feel that this case should be postponed and it's until you have a meeting with the councilwoman and with the neighbors, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, now, it was my understanding that a notice was sent out to um, individuals that live within that neighborhood. Um, and I guess my question is, how does that work? And I did try to reach out to um, the councilwoman. Ms. Oh. Cleveland? Yes, I know um, it, it, her last name is Cleveland. Madam Chair, we also have uh, Chris Alvarado here. Uh, I believe oh, he has yes. his hand. And he is the head of the local the development corporation. Go ahead, Chris. Hi there, yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would be happy to help facilitate uh, those meetings. I do agree uh, with the uh, uh, suggestion that we postpone this. Um, let me give you my phone number so that you can give me a call after this meeting. I've got another um, agenda item. Uh, my phone number, do you have a pen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's 216-429-1100. Extension 128. That's 429 1182, extension 128. That will ring me right here. And we can coordinate uh, that meeting with the councilwoman uh, and also for us to, uh, to work on your plans here. Okay, that's good. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's hard, kind of hard to know what everything, you know, all these people that, you know, to contact, but we definitely want to do what needs to be done. Okay. Well, we'd like to, then you're asking for a postponement, I assume. Yes, please. Okay. Then give me a date, Mrs. Kukla, for a postponement. Madam, Madam Chair, August 10th is approximately 30 days. Um, that's usually what we do for a public meeting. Madam Chair, we also have a Nicole Calhoun, a city planner for the staff has raised her hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Calhoun. Madam Chair, I'd like to also be a part of that meeting with Chris. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Chris, put her on your list. Got it. She'll be on her list. Also, in the meantime, uh, if the appellants could uh, clean up the exterior and just, you know, make sure that uh, things are, are tidy, that would just, it will help to make your case a lot stronger. Okay. Um, my question is, would you recommend that we start, can, can we start making renovations? What I am trying to avoid is I just want to make sure that, you know, we are doing the right thing and we're doing what's needed. Um, is it okay for us to start making renovations to the property? Um, just speaking for, for myself, I'll let the you know folks uh, with the city of Cleveland respond, you okay. know, just follow the permit process, make renovations. I mean, whatever, that will all all be helpful. So I, I would not recommend stopping you know, making a hard stop right now. Okay. But. Get rid of the to outdoor toilets and the debris and the paint cans and all that stuff out of there. Okay, perfect. Okay, okay. board, we've got a postponement requested for August the 10th without objection. 
Barnes oh, no. without, without objection. Thank you. Without objection. Thank you. Without objection. Thank you. Okay. Without objection. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. We'll just go right ahead, Ms. Faith. Uh, East seventy first. Calendar number 19-277 at 3869 East 71st Street, Mel's Automotive Sales LLC owner proposes to establish the use as a minor car re repair garage in a C1 multifamily residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. Thank you very much. Mr. Donovan. You're muted, Mr. Donovan. For everyone for this case, can you hear me? Yes. Please yes. raise your right hand and uh, your response is I do with your name. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Tony Brancatelli. I do, Moses Williams, Males Auto Sales. Okay. I do, Chris Alvarado, Slavic Village Development. That is all we don't, okay, we've got the councilman in too, okay. The history of the property, please, Mrs. Kuka. Thank you, Madam Chair. The property was originally zoned general retail in 1929. In 1976, it was changed to multifamily. And the uh, records from I found the permit was issued in 1924 to erect a gas station. And, uh, and also a garage was erected on the property in 1920. That was under a separate address of 7112 Canton. Um, on the Sanborn map, that address is shown as a house um, on the property as well. There are no variances on file. And in the more recent history, in 2005, a violation notice was issued regarding illegal use. The use at the time was stated as mercantile retail shops and carry out food. Um, then, Madam Chair, in 2010, a violation notice was issued regarding hazardous conditions on the exterior. In September of 2010, another violation was issued um, regarding hazardous conditions. Um, in 2013, a permit was issued or a violation issued was issued regarding a board up of oversized garage door. In 2014, there was a certificate of disclosure issue stating that the use of the property is as two dwelling units and a service station. In 2017, there was a violation notice issued regarding illegal use. There were no details on that one. 2018, a violation notice was issued um, that condemned the main structure of a single family residence. 2018, a violation notice, I'm sorry, of September of 2018, a violation notice was issued regarding exterior maintenance on the front commercial structure. And then on 2019, a permit was issued for interior exterior alterations to rehab the single family house on the property. And I believe that is all that I have, Madam Chair, back to you. Thank, thank you very much. The legal standard will be judging the case on, please, Ms. Wagner. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting a use variance and area variances from the setback, off-street parking, and landscaping regulations of the zoning code. To obtain the use variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will result in an unnecessary hardship, particular to the property, such as there will be no economically feasible use of the property without the variance will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights and the granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights and the granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Tell us exactly what you'd like to do. Uh, we would like to open a small minor repair garage in the front and just to um, give a little bit of background. We're, we're 
invested in the community right now. So we really been trying to work on this and we're uh, exactly what we're trying to do. Just open a small minor repair shop for our car. We actually own a used car lot. So we would like to work on our own cars, but at the same time, we want to also, you know, contribute to the community. So we're trying to uh, have something open to the public where we can do small minor repair also in the community. Are you living in the no, 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 we're not. We're actually rehabbing a house. And then that's going to be for sale or for rent? No, no, that's going to be for rent. We're maintaining that. We're keeping that. Okay. <laughs> when you say minor repairs, what did you have in mind? Um, what we're doing, we're trying to stay with, we're going to stay within the uh, requirements for minor repair, I believe, under the zoning code for motor vehicle minor repair. So just basically brakes, oil change, no major, nothing major. I can't handle anything major anyway, but <laughs> nothing major, all small stuff, all within the realms of the motor vehicle minor repair. How are you? What kind of hours are you thinking? We're thinking 10 to 5. What days? Monday through Saturday. And closed on Sunday? Definitely. Are you going to take from the neighborhood or just cars that are on your used car lot? No, no, no. We want to be definitely involved in the neighborhood. So we definitely want to be open to the public in our area. Okay, let's go to uh, Chris, Chris Alvarez from uh, the Local Development Corporation. Go ahead, Chris. Yes, thank you. Uh, we did have an opportunity to meet with Mr. Williams last week. It was uh, myself, uh, Councilman Brancatelli, and uh, Ms. Calhoun with the uh, City Planning Commission. Uh, they, uh, uh, we came to an uh, agreement uh, in terms of uh, the um, uh, adaptations that Mr. Williams would make to what he had proposed. One, uh, the name of the building uh, on the rendering that he provided uh, said Mel's Automotive um, uh, Sales, I believe, uh, but he's not going to be doing automotive sales. So uh, at this piece of property, so he would change the name to Mel's Automotive Group LLC. Um, he did agree that they would only provide the services that a minor repair garage would uh, provide uh, per Chapter 325.483, uh, um, that they would only serve this group of vehicles on the property and that no pro vehicles are going to be parked or serviced on any public street or roadway connected to the property and that the um, the rendering that was proposed will transition the window sh shutter from the outside of the building uh, to the inside of the building in order to uh, expose the uh, the bay window and make the uh, the building uh, a lot more uh, inviting. Thank you very much. Is Ms. Calhoun with us this morning? Yes, she is, Madam Chair. Yes, I am. Okay, and she's been sworn in? Yes, I have. Okay, then I'd like to hear from you. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I'd like to uh, yield to the councilman. Well, he usually likes to go last. Oh, we. <laughs> That's fine. With Councilman Brancatelli, uh, it's up to you. Uh, yes, I, I'm. I'm fine with uh, uh, jumping in here and chiming in if uh, that's okay. That's fine, Councilman. And I and I have been sworn at, so I'm good to go. Um, uh, uh, if I can uh, check with uh, Maurice, did you get the uh, renderings that uh, were sent by the appellant? No, th what I have is what I've shown you. That's, that's okay. I, so I I just e I just e I just emailed you the renderings, uh, which are important to this particular presentation, um, and we're the uh, actually changing. Uh, we're significant in uh, uh, how we're looking at uh, uh, making recommendations today. Um, so sorry, I know uh, uh, it's been a bit hectic of getting back and forth because I know that the chairwoman likes when I bring all kinds of paperwork for her and <laughs> present it to her at the table. Um, so we uh, we did uh, have a good meeting as uh, 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 Director uh, mentioned, uh, Director Alvarado, um, and uh, uh, he had shown some good architectural drawings of the renovations of what he's going to do for the outside of the building. Um, and the landscaping and fencing, as well as um, some of the corrective actions in the building. 
um, th that would be incredibly helpful um, to look at those. And um, uh, one of the questions I would have, Madam Chair, is um, what we did talk about, I mean, this has been going on for a little bit, um, what we did talk about is uh, as we give a variance approval uh, today, if that happens, um, that it be conditioned on the improvements being made um, so that, um, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so um, uh, what's in front of us is uh, uh, what uh, Moses had uh, um, presented when we, when we met. Um, it shows uh, three landscaping beds, uh, one in the corner in the front, um, one further south on the right-hand side, and then there's uh, an aerial picture that shows a landscaping bed behind those cars that parallel the fencing. Um, the, uh, um, it also, yeah, there you go. Um, it also shows some bike racks because uh, he is quite interested in helping with the uh, kids in the area um, uh, in terms of um, uh, potentially helping them out with uh, or free air and uh, some uh, some bike repairs, but those, those are um, as he, as we go down the path. Um, and then if we can show the front view of the building, which shows the uh, improvements. Um, but Dan Maurice is getting good at this. He is he is hopping at it. Um, so uh, it shows uh, uh, a lot of facade improvements um, uh, with uh, changing the front facing of the building. Um, the only question we had on there was the, the signage that says Mel's automotive sale. And uh, he was going to um, drop the automotive sales part and just say Mel's automotive um, since uh, sales are not allowed under minor repair. Um, and as, uh, as he pointed out, um, uh, the minor repairs that he plans on doing and has been doing in that uh, location have just in fact been that minor repairs. There's no sound systems, no car wash, no painting or major repairs, uh, mostly just the uh, um, some oil changes, tune-ups, um, and and minor repairs on the car. Um, so, uh, we, you know, there's a strong support um, of uh, providing this variance. Um, so long as these improvements get made, um, the property does have a couple of outstanding violations, as was mentioned in the earlier the condemnation on the main house, um, uh, the garage roof. There's a, a small garage behind this building that has a failing roof. Um, and so we all agreed uh, that we would support this. And uh, as he stated, um, uh, he wants to be a, a, a community asset. Um, and uh, so, the, so the question um, that uh, uh, we had asked Mr. Williams is that, can we do a conditional approval based on him getting a certificate of occupancy and completing all the work? And that was a question I would have either to um, Liz or if our attorney uh, needs to weigh in that it's a, uh, it would be a conditional approval um, once that once the improvements are made. Thank you, Councilman. I do have one question. There will be no parking of cars outside overnight, is my understanding. Is that what everybody else would like, Councilman? Um, uh, well, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry to say that, that conversation did not come up when we were meeting with him. Um, but uh, he generally has not. I mean, that, that was one of the contentions early on. There were cars that were parked in the right of ways parked on the sidewalks, that's all been cleaned up. Um, this is a safe route to school. Um, it's a major intersection where our brand new AB Hart School, um, the, the students come in this way um, once we start going back to school, hopefully soon. Um, the, uh, and uh, so that I, I think, um, yeah, not having, there's no auto sales, so there shouldn't be cars for sale or anything outside. And most of his cars have been stored inside. Um, so I would uh, uh, defer to Director Alvarado and to our planning, uh, Nicole, to um, weigh in on that as well. Ms. Calhoun? Yes, from what I understand, and um, Mr. Williams is on the line, from what I understand, there will not be overnight parking because it is all minor. So um, anyone that would come in there for a walk-in oil change, they would be handled and taken care of because there are no major um repairs being done on the pro on the premises and also no parking along the street as well okay any other comments board uh madam chair i had a question yes if we go if we go to the photograph of existing building Okay. And we see in the upper left hand corner 
uh, that there are cars parked on that grassy area between the garage and right. the house. Uh, two questions. We don't want to have any cars parked there. And where is the parking for the residents of that house going to be once that house is rented out and in use? Those questions are to the appellant. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Uh, you muted yourself, sir. There you go. Again. All right. Are we good? No. You can hear me. Okay. That area there behind the uh, behind the building, we actually want fence between the building and the house, and that'll be our supplemental parking for there. As far as the house, that we're, we want to run the fence there, and we want to run the the house parking will be that in that fenced in area. So there will be cars there. Correct. Okay. All right. Madam and Chair, is that in agreement with the with the, the council person and the CDC? I again. I, I'm wondering if that parking arrangement for that area being used for the uh, house parking. If that is in agreement with any discussion you've had with the council person and the CDC. Councilman Brancatello. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, where those garages are and where those two cars are parked, um, there is a curb cut um, uh, already there for an uh, apron. Um, it's, uh, I, I agree, we, we should not be parking on grass. But the fencing that he plans on putting along the front between the building and the house, um, so long as that gets paved, that would be legal parking there in front of those garage bays. Yes. I'm comfortable with that as well. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other comments, board? Madam Chair, we have Liz Kugel with Madam her hand raised. I'm sorry? Madam Chair, Madam Chair this is Liz Kugel. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Liz Kukla here. Um, the drawings do not show that area being paved in or a fence being installed. So those items have not been reviewed by building and housing. It might be best for him to apply for that under uh, a different application. Okay, thank you. Do you understand that, Mr. Go ahead, Ms. Kukla. Oh, sorry, and also regarding the council person's question, um, I don't believe that we can, that he can acquire a certificate of occupancy until um, he gets the approval from us. Um, so we can put the conditions in the resolution as the board sees fit, but the, the, um, the repairs and such, and they're all tied to this application. He, it would have to be a separate permit for him to get any sort of approval um, separate from this. So we couldn't hold ratification of this resolution um, pending all of that work because it's all tied to the same permit application. So we'd have to keep this moving um, towards building and housing. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you. So um, Ms. Kukla, so uh, when we approve this today, um, he would be able to get a certificate of occupancy, but until he does, um, if, if, if that does not occur, we all have faith that Mr. Williams is gonna complete this. He's been working very hard over there. Um, and, uh, uh, but if something happens and it does not get completed, does then the uh, variance not take effect if it's not completed? That is correct. Okay, I, thank you. I, I would if, I don't know if Mr. Riccardi wanted to jump in, but yes, he has to complete all the conditions that are um, set forth in our resolution to get that permit. And in order to get the permit or after the permit is issued, then he can get the certificate of occupancy. So it's all it's all tied together. Uh, it's, an, it's, it's an interesting question because the one question I would have is the, it's part of the deal, but here's an example. The sign, is it, do you usually need a sign approval separate or are we approving the sign as it's presented 
as part of the package now. That's a good question. Um, Mr. Donovan, I don't see any indication of a sign um, being mentioned on this application. So generally, the sign is referenced in the write-up. Um, sometimes we see it as the, the write-up will state a separate sign permit is needed as well. But in this case, there were no elevations that were submitted. So building and housing probably didn't even know that there was a sign in question. So yes, he needs to apply separately for that sign. So in other words, we will not be putting a sign as one of the deliverables under this permit? No. Okay. Just Madam one. Chair, Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, who's that speaking? This is uh, Councilman Francatelli. Okay, Councilman. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, if, I, if I may, I just want to be sure that uh, the uh, renderings that we sent to Maurice that he put up on the screen are part of the, um, the, the uh, motion today. Um, and uh, the uh, second part of that is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Mr. Williams and, and uh, uh, planning, planning staff people um, all agreed that uh, we would remove the sales portion of that signage. Um, but everything else we would like to see be part of the motion so that we know what the exterior and what the site plan will look like. Okay, Mike, I have a question, everybody. The driveway is 48 feet wide on the, on the plan that he has submitted. Is that allowable? Ms. Calhoun or Mr. Riccardi or whoever else is with the city? Yeah, 71st Street, a 48 foot wide apron. That's pretty wide. If I'm not mistaken, when I did do a site visit, it's already there. It's already in place. Um, and so um, I, I would, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not very familiar with the zoning for the parking lot. Yeah, that's, it, it's a really long stretch, um, a really long apron that's already in place. It actually extends to the other, to the end of the house where you can't even use it. So um, I'm not familiar with that. Yes, this is Richard Riccardi. The a driveway is only permitted to be 30 feet, but if it is existing, we we typically don't cite it. Um, so, and as as was stated, this is existing. Okay. Thank thank you for the clarification. Any other comments, Madam Chair? If, yes. if I may, if I may, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, thank you, Councilman Brancatelli. Again, um, that that uh, those curb cuts will shrink significantly. Um, when he right. puts the landscaping bed in on the corner, as okay. uh, the drawing that was submitted uh, just recently, it shows that there's a, a very large landscaping bed which will shrink. Yeah, so oh, there you go. Yes, there you so, go. So that will shrink those curb cuts um, down significantly. So it'll be much more. It'll be much more pedestrian safe um, and also vehicular safe for pulling in and out of. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, questions, concerns, board? I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, given the testimony and support from the councilman as well as city planning, I move that we approve the variances as requested um, for calendar number 19 277. Uh, the appellant has testified that the hours of operation will be Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And um, uh, the conditions show that. The appellant has agreed to only do minor repairs, um, that cars that will be serviced will be serviced on the property and not on the street, as well as there will be no storage of, of cars overnight and that all cars will be put inside the building if they are not being serviced. And the plans have to be enforced, have to be installed before occupancy. Plans that have been showing the landscaping and all. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a second? I hear, a, I'll, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Call the roll. Ms. Barnes? Barnes, yes. 
Ms. Bates? Yes. Ms. Britt? Yes. Mr. Donovan? Yes. And Mrs. Johnson? Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Williams. You got a lot to do, babe. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, board members. And certainly thank you, Mr. Williams. We look forward to this moving, getting done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Go ahead, Ms. Faith. Okay. Calendar number 20 that's 030 at 573 East 117th Street. Mega City LLC owner proposes to change the use from a four dwelling unit apartment to an eight dwelling unit apartment in a C3 multifamily residential zoning district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland codified ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. Thank you very much, Mr. Donovan. Okay, well, everyone for this case, please raise your right hand. I will make a statement. Your response is I do with your name. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. I will call on Charlie. I do. Charlie Townsend. I do, Sharonda Watley, City Planning. All right. Sounds like we got three people. Okay, great. Thank you very much. The history of the property, please, Mrs. Kupa. Thank you, Madam Chair. There's been no change in the zoning since 1929. In the records room, I found a permit was issued in 1913 to erect a two-story apartment building. There are no variances on file. And in more recent history, I found that a violation notice was issued in 2008 for general maintenance. Later in 2008, a permit was issued to correct violations on the property. And then in 2013, a violation notice was issued for exterior maintenance. And in 2018, a, a certificate of disclosure was issued stating that the authorized use of the property is as four dwelling units. And that's all that I have, Madam Chair, back over to you. Thank you very much. Going to Ms. Wagner for the legal standard we'll be judging the case on. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. The Pollen is requesting area variances from the Austri parking access and fence requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variances, the appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and that granting the variances will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you very much. Mega City, tell us exactly what you'd like to do. Hello, everyone. Um, so, did you, uh, did you meet with the yeah. planner like we had requested? No. Uh, after, like, I applied the first time, the things ch changed a little bit. I spoke to like Sharonda from the city. So it's technically, I mean, due to funding for COVID nineteen, I had some problems. So it's going to be. Uh, really very hard for me to convert the building to eight units that's what i i told it it's technically better for me for now to keep it four units and just to do like cosmetic to make the building ready but they told me that still i have to have parking i grandfathered the building without the parking apartment apart apparently so that's why i, I acquired 569 east 117th street uh, it's still being like transferred. It's not under uh, company name yet, but that's the the lot. Uh, I'll build the park parking for this four units. It has to be paved and drained. The parking lot with well, some landscaping. Yes, uh, the, I'm I'm working with people like professional about the drainage. Um, that that's the only question I have. Like I haven't solved it yet. Uh, my my question is like if I'm not able to do the parking, like 
Is there any parking related to the building I purchased, like 573 East 117th Street? We don't know that. Oh. Madam Chair, this is Liz Kukla. I'm sorry, Liz, I can't. This is, there is a revised, uh, sorry, there is an original drawing that um, if Mr. Rulins could click over to it, there are parking spaces shown in front of the building. Those are the, the uh, that was the application uh, made, yeah. sorry, that was the site plan made with this application. So this is actually what he's requesting. The um, That other site plan showed the proposed for the land bank lot that he's acquired. Madam Chair, might I point out that both streets are labeled as East 118th Street. So I'm not sure which one is East 118th and which is the East 117th on this drawing. So right now they're illegally, can I see the front of the building again, please, uh, Maurice? Sure. They're parking in the front? Oh, already. Madam Chair, Mr. Riccardi has his hand raised. Yes, Mr. Riccardi. Did I hear the applicant say that he's only requesting, he's no longer requesting eight units? Correct. I mean, if he's not requesting eight units, there would not be a variance required unless he wants to put the parking in the front. Right now, the building, as as was cited in, as as uh, Ms. Kukla read in the existing certificate of disclosure, right now the building is at, at least considered a legal four unit with whether it has parking on it or not. Okay. So you could do a four unit building there. If you want to put parking in the front, even for the four units, you're going to, you, you would need a variance, but, um, if you did nothing at all, you could. It, it could be a four-unit. So he could withdraw. To be a four-unit building. Yeah, could, that was, yeah. That was my question. I was like, so if he's just going four units. Does he need to be here right now, unless he's trying to do something else? No, let, let's. He could withdraw. Right. Take it. Take the invitation. But of course, if, if even if he's withdrawing, as to understand, and that doesn't include the parking in the front of the building. Right. I don't think he was showing it there. He's showing it off a deck, which is in the back of the building. Go back. Where's our appellant? Can the applicant clarify? I'm sorry, to, to better change purpose. Can the applicant clarify where he's putting? The parking in the revised site plan, please. It's in the back. It's off the back. Yeah. It's okay. In the, the initial. Uh, can uh, Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. So in in the initial drawing, when I um, showed the parking lot on like from the deck side from the back, I received a letter from the city saying that the the entrance for that parking lot is through the churches, like. I mean, that uh, area is belonging to church, so we cannot go through the church's land to get to the parking. So that's why this drawing is old. I gave you the new one with no parking on the back. I'm not sure if you guys have it or not. But the thing is, like, since there is no parking assigned to the building, yeah, that was my main question. But you guys always ask that, that even if, if I don't have parking, I can still, I mean, it can still legally be four units because that's the way I purchased the building. I don't know where the tenant's going to um, like park the cars. Maybe, I mean, the tenant's going to be no, they, they won't need any parking. I'm not sure about that. I'll make a bicycle parking on the back. Um, that's understandable. I have a small like area for that, but not for the cars. You got to rent to people who don't have cars. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, so that there's a bus stop there. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So if you withdraw, you can keep operating with four units and not worry. But we don't have to give you any okay for four places to park. 
Perfect. Thank you okay. so much. So I'll do with the city to pull the permits and continue the. Thank you very much. Okay. Without objection, board. He's going to withdraw. Without, without objection. Yeah, okay. Fine. Without objection. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Without objection. Okay. Objection. Objection. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Faith, for the next one. Okay. Calendar number 20-028 at 4014 East 123rd Street. Joseph Nimmer, owner, proposes to establish use as a state licensed residential facility for a maximum five residents in a B1 two family residential district. The owner appeals for relief from the strict application of the Cleveland Codified Ordinances as stated in the agenda and the public record. Thank you very much. Everyone for this case. Everyone for this case. Please raise your right hand. And at the end of my statement, I'm looking for the response I do and your name. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Is there anyone here for this case? Maurice? Uh, I have uh, Joseph Nimmer signed up. Are you here, Joe? I, Joe I, I, Mr. Nimmer? Yes, ma'am. Did you hear what I just said? You're supposed to raise your right hand. You do, okay. Anyone else? They're on the phone. They're not. Yes, uh, this is Amanda Kramer from Union Miles. I also um, will be testifying. Okay, Amanda, anybody else? Okay, the history of the property, please, Mrs. Cooper. We already had it, didn't we? Oh. Yes, I'd be happy to read it again if you would like, though. Uh, my first question to Mr. Nimmer is before we go any further is, have you met with the councilman, the planner, and the CDC? Uh, yes, I, I met with the councilman, uh, uh, Mr. Bishop, and um, the CDC. Okay. And then we'll move forward. The legal standard will be judging the case on, please, Ms. Wagner. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Appellant is requesting an area variance from the spacing requirements of the zoning code. To obtain the area variance, appellant must prove that denying the request will create a practical difficulty not generally shared by other land or buildings in the same district, will deprive the appellant of substantial property rights, and the granting the variance will not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the zoning code. Thank you very much. What is that noise? Somebody's My phone. Um, Mr. Nimmer, tell us exactly again what you'd like to do after you met with both the councilman and the CDC. Well, um, my my project is to uh, open up a male group home for veterans. You know, I uh, um, I'm a recovering individual, first of all, and and you know, out of these 20, 28 years. You know, I've decided to give back, and and I noticed that you know uh, uh, a lot of the veterans are on our street. Uh, they, I see them with the signs, and you know, I work at Cleveland State University and Playhouse Square, and in that block we have a lot of them. So I decided to help, you know, uh, um, by by giving them housing, and you know. In my efforts, I, I, I'm glad to meet with you guys. Good morning to everybody, you know, uh, um, and for your suggestion. I talked to uh, uh, the councilman, and uh, Mr. Bishop said he's not against the project. Neither is Mr. Duffy and his uh, crew. I walked in, and, and you know, I got uh, uh, signatures from the people in the areas that I could, and... You know, I, I submitted them. Now, in the map that I have that 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 I obtained from you guys, it looked like um, a few of the homes are closer than 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 mine. You know, so I, I'm trying to help. That's all. <laughs> well, it's 
Maurice, is the thousand feet, do we have that circle again on the screen? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, His the proposed uh, location is the star at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so there are four already in the area. Four in the area, although I think only one is actually within the one thousand foot. Okay. Have you met with your neighbors by chance, Mr. Nimmer? Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked with them. I talked with them uh, um, as I, you know, I, 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 I got the house and I, you know, in the process, I had to put a roof on the back porch, the front, front porch. you know, and, and, and me doing that, I, I'm, I talked with them and, and expressed and explained to them what, what my project was and they're not in the opposition to me. Okay. And you're, how many, you're just going to have five? Ben, it's just going to be male, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Okay. Can we verify the uh, support from the people that are also uh, on the in the room there? Did we get any communication, Liz, from anybody, CDC, council person, anybody? No, Madam Chair, I have not received anything. But Ms. Kramer, I believe, is from the Development Corporation, and she's on with us. Okay. Ms. Kramer. Ms. Kramer. Yeah, hi, good morning. This is Amanda from Union Miles Development Corporation. Um, so after the last meeting, um, Mr. Nimmer did come in and give us a rundown of what it is that he's looking to accomplish. Um, and there is definitely a need for veteran housing in the community. We're at our own housing initiative right now. so. Um, you know, this is definitely a need. Um, we haven't, you know, we haven't seen, um, you know, just because of everything that's going on, we haven't really been able to, to see a lot of the, the intricate plans of how, you know, this will run and be operated. But, you know, we are, um, we have established communication with Mr. Nimmer, who's actually in my office. Um, so we are, um, you know, we really were just kind of wanting to see what the board had to say about this and uh, understand that he does have approval from the councilman for this. Speed planning. Well, if, if the councilman, uh, Maurice Rowland, city planning, um, if the councilman and the CDC are supportive of this uh, proposal, we would, we would support this proposal. I'll entertain a motion if there are no other questions. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, given that in the overlay map, uh, the gentleman's house, the appellant's house is uh, just on the borderline, uh, given support of the uh, city council member Bishop and the CDC and city planning um, and expressing that there is a need for this type of housing in this community, I move that we support uh, calendar number 20-028 and uh, for approval. Second. Call the roll. Ms. Barnes. Barnes approval. Ms. Britt. Yes. Ms. Bates. Yes. Mr. Donovan. Yes. Mrs. Johnson. Yes. Calendar 20 28 is granted. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck, Mr. Nimmer. All of business you, one through 26. Without objection. objection. Okay. Without objection. Okay. Good. Coach, can you call a roll on that? Yeah. Just so we're on the record. Sure. Um, this is regarding items one through twenty-six. Ms. Barnes. Ms. Barnes. But she wasn't here for that. Oh, That's I'm right. Sorry. You're right. She wasn't. I'm sorry. Ms. Bates. Uh, without objection. Ms. Britt. Without objection. 
And uh, Mr. Without Johnson, objection. And Mr. Donovan. Without objection. Where did it go? I don't see it on my screen anymore. And there. I. I wasn't here for the first one, so or the twenty sixth one. So, I'm okay, from two to twenty five, without objection. Got it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. That's it. That's so, it. I would like to make a suggestion. If maybe we would meet at nine twenty, in case we have any problems, instead of at nine, and then have to close off and come back again. What does everybody feel about that? Fine. 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 Okay. Whatever you need.